Hello again everyone, this is Steve Bishop continuing our series on programming in Access 2003. We're also continuing on in the database section here. Going back to our initial table that we were creating and I went through some of the options. Just a, a few more options I want to go over real quick. Uh, the field size for your text. Uh, this is obviously very important because especially if you want to say for example you want to keep track of someone's state uh, you will want to probably narrow this down to just say two characters so you just get the postal state you know like for me I'm in Arizona so I'd get AZ that sort of thing and there are ways in which you can make sure that when somebody enters that information that they're only able to put in the two but this is one very good way of making sure that they're limited to just those two characters uh, I'm not not going to keep track of the state in this particular table. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but one of the other things you may be asking yourself is back when I changed this date of birth um, to for, initially, I don't know if you recall, but it was called age, and there was a number there. It was a numeric data type, and I just went in here and changed it. And you're thinking, well, wait a minute, what if I already had data in there? What if I already had uh, put in people's names and, and, and information and there was already ages in there. How would I be able to do this? Well, you're right, because uh, if I tried to do that and I changed the data type from a numeric to a data type, I'd get an error in Access would say, hey, wait a minute, you know, you're changing this, there might be some problems. The way that you normally would handle that is if you already have some data in there and you realize, oh, this is the wrong kind of data, you don't want to track it, so you would actually go ahead and create, you know, um, another field which is going to keep track of that date and time and then you would just come back up here and you would just go ahead and delete this. Uh, I'm not really going to um, do that right now. Well, I guess I'll just go ahead and save that as the date of birth. Go back in here and change the format. Uh, input mask. We'll say yes, we do want to save. Yes, the short date. Okay, so these are just some quick little adjustments. Default value, we're just going to go to date, which is today's date. Tab on down and save our table. And yes, I do want to say that this is required. Okay, oops, save it again. All right, so now that I've got my, my format of what I want, um, one well, I'm I'm not going to deal with that right now. I was going to say we probably need something unique, but we'll just go ahead and use the employee ID as a unique way of identifying somebody. So when they log in, we can do it kind of one of two ways. Uh, you know, we can give it we can give them a ID number that they have to use to log in, uh, or if we wanted to, we could go with say a user uh, username, for example, and make that again short text. And again, I can change the field size. Let's say I don't want anybody to have uh, you know, a username longer than 20 characters in in size. And again, we'll also make sure that this is, uh, um, yeah, 20. 20 is good, and it is required. We need to make sure that it's required. Allow zero length? No, no, we're not going to allow blanks. It has to be filled in. All right, so we've got our first table. And if we want to go and enter data into this table, the way we're going to do this is there's actually several different ways you can get to the data input uh, variety. Where, where can I start adding you know, employees to this table? Because um, here's the format of the data. How do I go in and you know, start actually entering in these things without having to build some big form right now? I, I already just want to get started, get some employees in there so that I have some actual data to work with. The way you do that, there's several different ways. There, You can either click on the Home tab or the Design tab, and you'll see that this view up here is available, and you can select the drop-down, and you can switch back and forth between the different views. When you get to forms and reports and other you know, queries and such, you can actually get more options than just these two, the data sheet and design view. But that's one way you can go in, and now you can see I have the option to start entering in data. The other option is you can go here, you can right click on the table itself, and again you have open or design view. Design view is the version that we were just looking at here. If I click to open, that's actually the data sheet view. And then of course over here in table, you or, uh, oh, let's go back here to design view, 
go into the design tab and again you can see the view you can also right click on the tab and you, again you'll get the data shoot or design view you can close and save all that good stuff so let's go into our data shoot view I'm gonna put in my information here and let's see what's my password I'm just gonna make password really secure right that is just a tough nut to crack right there uh, and I'm I'm a pretty important Joe, so I'm gonna give myself sixty bucks an hour. I mean I'm I am, you know I'm making some big bucks, right? Uh, sixty bucks an hour, holy cow, right? All right, uh, what's my date of birth? Um, let's make one up. Let's say it's twelve twenty four and nineteen eighty. Why not? Okay, twelve twenty four nineteen eighty. Um, username. Now. This is pretty standard business practice. You may want to get into this. Um, I generally use first initial last name. If two people have the same first initial and same last name, uh, then you may want to go with the middle initials, which mine would be M, so maybe something like that. But S. Bishop, this does not necessarily tie in right now with uh, the username at which I logged into Windows with. I don't know if you, if you care about that, but. Uh, there are ways that Access can grab the username that logged into the computer and it can even get the computer name and I, I've built some scripts before that basically use that information who logged in and and uh, what computer are they logging in on and I can specify which printer that certain reports will print to because of who logged in and on what computer they logged into so this information can become really really fun when you start being able to access that and we'll, we'll get into that obviously when we get into the VBA code but uh, it's just something exciting to think about for right now we're just going to create a username that somebody's going to log in with so when they get the initial screen they have to know their username and they have to know their password which is just highly secure and all that good stuff so we're going to go ahead and save that information um, Let's go ahead and make one more person. Let's make uh, Jane Doe, because uh, she's just uh, she's a good employee of ours. So her password is going to be the same as mine. Look at that. We are just so similar. And because Jane's a good employee, I'm going to make it 20 bucks. And you notice because we set the the formatting to currency, right? Oops. Let me go back in here. Because we set the format. Oh, it's not going to let me do it until up. Oh, notice that. See, I said uh, I have to enter something in here, right? So J Doe. Okay. Notice it wouldn't let me go because I said that this field was required. So let's go over a couple of those things that just happened there. Number one, this was formatted to currency, so it's got the dollar figure in front of it, and then it required me to have a username in here. And notice the date didn't give us any problems because we have a default. So let's go back into our design view real quick and just take a look at that. Notice our data type is currency and because it's currency it automatically gave us the formatting with the dollar figure in front of it. right? Then also we said well we required, remember we had a requirement that a username must be put in and when I initially tried to jump over there was no username yet so Access automatically said wait a minute you have to put in a username before I'm gonna let you save this information and that's why we got the error okay so we'll flip back on over here and you know again if you want to add more information you could you know let's say uh, if we just for example we had a website right oh this would be a hyperlink I'm gonna go I don't know HTTP youtube.com forward slash I don't, I don't even know what my username is or what's what's my uh, see channel blah 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 I don't even know what that is but we'll go ahead and say okay that's my YouTube channel right there so we can enter even a hyperlink here which is really nice and if you wanted to you click on it right from the table here and lo and behold here's gonna be uh, taking us there so some really nice things in access for storing our data the way the formatting of the data looks here we have our programming page that's my page that just looks awesome huh look at that picture of me right there right yeah it's uh, I really went full bore into this programming page maybe this will get better as it goes probably 10 years from now somebody's gonna pull up this page and go wow yikes it looked like that okay well anyway um, 
we'll be moving on into, we'll start looking at some of the other data uh, tables that we're going to create, how we start developing some relationships between different tables, because obviously this isn't the full extent of what we're going to have for our application. So that's going to be in our next video.